Now to the chess player under investigation and facing possible criminal charges. Where this is like something straight out of a movie. A chess champion is accused. How far would you go? The behavior was throwing off a lot of the other competitors. Lots of kind of suspicious behavior. He was able to fool his competitors and even tournament staff. Was leaving the room, only coming in to play the games. To win a game of chess. Ay, ay, ay. Just a normal day in Russia? Jeez, this is insane. Today we take a look at two ridiculous stories where players went too far. By turning the pieces on the board into chemical weapons. That's some bad stuff, you guys. That's some bad stuff. And the heroes ways in which they were caught. The cheater has since been expelled from the tournament. They did expel him from the tournament. And no one knows what his next move will be. Whatever the possible motivation, she now faces the possibility of never playing chess competitively again. Welcome, Aguilo. Our first story takes us to Russia, to a city called Makachkala, where a regional championship is taking place. We're going to put ourselves in the shoes of this lady, Umayganat Osmanova. Now, you're this lady, Osmanova, you're playing this regional championship, right? It's going pretty well. You're actually one of the favorites to win. In fact, you won a very similar tournament just a month before this one. And apparently, you like to pose in your wedding gown with a bunch of chess trophies and medals for some reason. I actually spent more time than I'm willing to admit trying to figure this picture out because I just don't get the certain. Like, is it actually a wedding? Is it a photo shoot? I, 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 anyway, this is one of just like two pictures of her that exist on the internet, so we had to use it. But like, if anyone can figure out what the setting of this picture is, please let me know. Anyway, so you come into the playing hall for the next round of the tournament. You sit down at your board, fully concentrated, and you start playing. Soon after your game starts, you notice a strange dark liquid dripping out from under your board. But you pay no attention to it, right? I mean, there's an intense chess game going on. Someone probably just didn't clean well enough. Then about half an hour into the game, you start to feel off. You are dizzy, nauseous. There's a strange metallic taste in your mouth. You remember the dark liquid you saw earlier? When you raise alarm as you start to realize that you may have just been poisoned. I'm dead. I'm so dead. The tournament was halted. The tournament director collected a sample of the strange liquid, which was later identified as mercury, and the police and ambulance were called. Fortunately, the plane hall had CCTV, and when the footage was checked, we realized that yes, it was intentional poisoning, and the entire crime had been caught on camera. Here's the tape. This is the plane hall with tables and just boards. And usually each board is numbered for identification. So these little cards that you see next to each board are likely the board numbers. Now at the start of each round, the pairings are printed up showing who will play who and on what board. So at the start of the clip, we see in frame one of Osmanova's rivals and the perpetrator, Amina Vakarova. She's a 40-year-old respected chess player and coach in the area. In fact, these two are long-time rivals. They are two of the best chess players in the region and so they compete a lot. Remember the tournament we mentioned that Osmanova won just a month prior to this one? Well, she had actually tied for first with Amina and Osmanova had only won on tie breaks. And it looked like this time Amina had come up with a plan to take out her rival. So this footage is from 20 minutes before the start of the round. We see Amina first approach the stage and Look at the piece of paper on the table there. These are likely the pairings for the next round. So on that piece of paper, she would find what board she'll be playing on. But also, she would also see what board Osmanova would be playing on. From there, she walks down the hall to her board. Looking around suspiciously, she places her back down. So this is likely her board where she'll be playing. But then she walks up to the next board, not her board, actually where Osmanova will be playing. And we can see her pour something onto the table just in front of where Osmanova will be sitting. She reportedly later admitted that this was mercury. She, she apparently got it from a thermometer. And then she takes one of the chest pieces and smears the liquid all over the table, make sure it gets everywhere. And then she looks around again to make sure that no one saw her and walks off, confident that she had just committed the perfect crime, except for the tiny detail that everything was recorded on camera. Now for a hilarious detail. Minutes before this happened, Amina had gone to the organizers and asked them whether the CCTV cameras in the plane hall were working. And they had told her that the cameras were in fact not working. Yeah, 
that happen and it's the most suspicious thing ever right i'm sure even if the cameras were indeed not working before that as soon as she asked the organizer this question the guy went like okay i need to turn those cameras on like right now something is about to go down <laughs> either way the cameras were working everything was recorded she was caught red-handed now she admitted everything she did basically because they had beef no i smell beef so this was not just done to eliminate a competition to win some tournament right that maybe play the role but this is at the amateur level they're not playing for a ton of money not not enough to almost kill someone over anyway but it turned out they had had a disagreement at a previous game amina a poisoner but apparently showed up to a previous game against osmanova with a phone which is which is against the rules osmanova a victim had found out that she didn't report it to the organizers or anything but they they had a bit of an argument about it after the game and amina said that osmanova had been rude to her and had said nasty things about her and her family behind her back this made her unhappy and led to the event she added that she didn't want to harm osmanova only wanted to scare her she was detained by the police and she's being investigated for possible criminal charges and she was suspended from the russian chess federation pending the results of said investigation this was as at august and there haven't been any more updates since to the story that i could find osmanova our victim was fine thankfully she didn't suffer any any complications in fact she was able to return and finish playing that very tournament and even ended up finishing second and won a prize as a result i mean that's that's pretty gangster and another medal for her collection our next story features a sensation that was on earth at the kenyan open that turned out to have a very sordid secret it's the kenyan open in april 2023 they have flagship tournament that is very well funded with a prize fund of 42,000 US dollars. It's it attracted grandmasters from near and far. The women's section was going to be the stage for an incredible story that would be heard all around the world. As player registration for the women's section is going on, a mysterious figure enters the playing hall. No one knows who she is. She's dressed in full traditional Muslim attire with head and face covering and spectacles. She walks up to the tournament organizers to register to play in the women's section and she doesn't say a word. She simply writes her name on a piece of paper and shows it to them. Millicent Awo. Who is that girl? Her name is not in any database, meaning she, she's never played an official chess tournament before. This will be her first one. So she's registered as a new player for the tournament. Now it's pretty normal, especially in big tournaments, for players to show up who've never played in official tournaments before, right? That, that wasn't strange. But as the tournament started, she began to draw even more attention and intrigue. First reason was because she was not engaging with anyone. Because chess tournaments are also a bit social, right? People like to talk, analyze games, catch up, just hang out, but not her. She would show up, play her game, not say a word to anyone, and leave immediately after her game ended. In two days, no one had heard so much as a peep from her. Second reason she was drawing so much attention was because of her performance. She was doing really, really well. She won all of her first three games, even beating a former national champion of Kenya in one of those games. Now, I mentioned that it's not strange for unrated players to show up at tournaments, right? But it is strange when they outperform national champions. Right, because you would usually need to start playing and build experience before you get that good. So many heads were turning to pay attention to this seemingly sensational talent. Third reason for the intrigue was that people were starting to suspect that she was not who she said she is. It was said that she had a strange gait, so the way she walked was not like a woman. And let's take another look at this picture of her, and we're going to focus on that. Her shoes stick out quite a bit. In the words of the organizer, they look like masculine shoes. And so people suspected that the reason she wasn't talking was to hide her voice because she was in fact a he and not a she. No sir, that's a man. In the fourth round, she played against the top player from Uganda and although she lost, the organizers decided that they had to satisfy their curiosity. They took her into a private room and asked her to show some ID to confirm her identity. And she folded. She or he admitted that he was in fact male. He's called Stanley Omondi, a 25-year-old university student. He was pretending to be a girl to try and win some money. We mentioned that this was a very well-funded tournament. The, the prize fund for the women's section alone was almost $4,000. 
Stanley had some money issues and wanted a slice of the pie. Now he wanted to play in the women's section because it would give him better chances of winning the prize. In the open section there were actual grandmasters playing, he would have zero chances of winning anything. In fact, even in the women's section there were much stronger players so his chances weren't that great but they were much better than playing in the open section. There's an interesting larger discussion that could be had here about gender and chess that I'm intentionally trying to avoid. I'll probably talk about it in more detail sometime down the line. But this was a very intriguing story and of course it went everywhere. Stanley was kicked out of the tournament of course. His previous games that he had won were all reversed and he was eventually banned from Kenyan chess for three years. As fascinating as these stories were, these were complete amateurs, right? What would happen if actual grandmasters were caught cheating at chess? Watch that video to find out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.